Hello and welcome to our presentation today from the Texas Real Estate Research Center. I'm Dr. Jim Gaines, and today we're going to talk about the Texas housing market. And I have an outlook for 2023, the rest of this year, and then a little bit of outlook for next year and see how things are going. The, the, this year and for next year, of course, there are going to be numerous factors that are going to be affecting the housing market. Not the least of which, of course, is going to be interest rates and how, how much the interest rates are. They've been variable for the past year. Uh, in, in the early part of uh, April of 2022, uh, the interest rate actually exceeded 5% after being at historical low levels of even down below 3%. And that has been dictating a lot of the activity in the housing market for the last uh, uh, almost a year now not only the interest rates, but also the ease and tightening of mortgage credit availability by the lenders. Uh, lenders have become a little bit more conservative, uh, a little bit more diligent in their underwriting criteria. Other factors though, the main factor going on in Texas for that matter is demographics. We're still adding people to our population base. We'll add probably close to 400,000 people this year and, and perhaps 350 to 400,000 uh, additional people next year. Texas is still growing, and the demographics, of course, are still the main influence, along with inventory. Uh, the existing market is still limited. We still have a really what effectively is a tight market. New construction has been hampered by the higher interest rates, so that inventory, in turn, is also uh, limited. Affordability is, is really a factor of how much down and how much a month. It, affordability is tied to interest rates, but there are ways to get around that. As long as we have demographic growth, and as long as we have employment and income growth, as like we've been experiencing for the last 10 years here in the state of Texas, the housing market is still going to be able to maintain and do very, very well. Another factor, though, that has really been important the last year and will carry over into 2024, although the effect is going to start diminishing, and that is the wealth effect of pandemic savings. Uh, the savers at households during the pandemic were recipients of extreme amounts, trillions of dollars, literally, of uh, stimulus payments and so forth, and during the pandemic, couldn't spend money as the way they would normally do. So there's been a, a huge buildup, or there was a huge buildup of savings account. In fact, uh, household savings exceeded the normal level of savings by some two and a half trillion dollars. That's the money that's been coming into the economy for the last year or so. And really the reason there hasn't been a recession. People are still employed. They still have income, and they had high levels of savings to spend and to, to, to uh, invest into housing and other types of goods and services. Here's what the fixed mortgage rate, the FMR, the 30-year fixed mortgage rate, has looked like. And you can see there back in 2020 and 2021 how it dipped down to historical lows of less than 3%. And here currently, and these are monthly numbers, uh, so they're not quite as, as uh, reflective of what happens on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis. In fact, uh, just last week, uh, Freddie Mac updated that data. You can see uh, it, it, on, in the week of October 12th, the FMR hit about 7.57% as an average for the week. For the week of October 19th, it hit 7.63. There are numerous reports and, and confirmation that in different markets and at different points in time, the interest rate has already hit about 8%. And there's uh, the expectations that for the rest of this year, on into the fourth quarter, and on into the first quarter of 2024, we can expect to see the interest rate hovering in that 7.5% to perhaps 8.25% to 8.5% uh, range. And then hopefully... And this is more hopeful than a formal projection, but hopefully by the midpoint of next year, we may start seeing that rate turn back down and come back down again. 
but it'll probably still stay in the 7% to 7.5%, maybe hit about 65 by the end of the year. That's what the Mortgage Bankers Association has forecast. Uh, it's still problematic of whether that would happen. I point out to you that on April 15th of 2022 was the first day that the fixed mortgage rate for 30-year mortgages exceeded 5%. And that's a little bit, that's a significant number because we had known prior to that, during 2020 and 2021, when interest rates were at their historical low point, we kept speculating where would be the magic number that would influence the housing market the most, at what level would the interest rate uh, hit to, to start seeing that impact. And 5% turned out to be sort of the magic number. Now, of course, as you can uh, know, the interest rates have cons consistently gone above 5% since that time, but that was a magic date when interest rates hit 5%. No secret, home sales go up when interest rates are down, and they come down when interest rates are up. It's just an inverse relationship in the marketplace, affects ability to pay, it affects the purchasing power, of course, of buyers, of how high the interest rate is, because that affects how much their mortgage payments are going to be. And the higher those mortgage payments, they, the less they can borrow to meet debt-to-income ratios and other standards that are used in loan underwriting. So it's no secret. And, and, and we've had in 2020, 21, and early part of 2022, historic run on the volume and level of home sales in Texas and in the United States when interest rates hit such magnificent lows and historical lows that they'd never seen before. And now you know, what's happening in today's marketplace is just the inverse of that. With interest rates now 75 to 8% and better, we are seeing that volume of home sales come down considerably. Similarly, we are seeing the volume of housing starts uh, also significantly down. Uh, new home construction is extremely interest rate sensitive. Uh, home builders have to pay attention to the, how, their cost of capital to build the homes. They have, of course, to have to pay attention to interest rates for buyers to be able to buy their products. And since uh, April of 2022, again, we peaked out. In, in home construction and single family starts at the United States level. And then it, since then it's been down uh, close to 20%, uh, about 15 to 20%. And that's been true pretty much universally uh, around the country. In Texas, if you look at a plot of monthly housing permits, uh, what you'll discover is and look at a trend on April uh, of 2022, when the interest rates hit 5%, there was a, a complete downturn in housing starts and housing permits, I should say, uh, in, the, in the state of Texas. And we're expecting that to level out a little bit here during the fourth quarter. But if interest rates continue on up to about 8 or 8 and a quarter percent, as we discussed a second ago, that, that decline will probably continue until we start seeing a significant decline in the interest rates. But to this point, we'll have to see how that works. Now, in Texas, we've not been as affected uh, statistically as hard as a lot of other markets in the United States. We're still building a lot of houses. Uh, the Dallas-Fort Worth uh, metroplex, the Houston metropolitan area, and in what you might call Central Texas, Austin, San Antonio, I-35 corridor, are the top three home building markets in the United States. And they are continuing that, that trend. Uh, it is all relative. So yes, they're all having the, their slight downturns, but it's at about 14, 13, 14%. We'll see how that works out for the rest of the year. What we're looking at uh, probably for 2023, uh, fourth quarter is going to be problematic again because of the higher interest rates and the fact that home builders have been building fairly actively here the first three quarters of the year. We're looking for probably somewhere between a 16 to 20 percent decline in total single family building permits for the year. 
Uh, monthly sales, a similar pattern. Uh, if you look at the data starting at April of 2022 when that interest rate hit 5%, there was a very noticeable and significant decline in the general trend of home sales in the state. Uh, 2023 uh, top month of July, uh, considerably below the top month of, of July and of 20 and 21. Uh, so we could see a definitive trend 2023, also down from 2022, but not quite as much. And the trend is again, we think going to start flattening out a little bit, but uh, probably not for another quarter, maybe two quarters before that flattening becomes real noticeable and then reverses and starts back up the trend line. Price levels have also fallen somewhat with the with the uh, price with the change in the home sales. Uh, average price right now in the current terms is about five percent less than its peak in May of 2022. We peaked out in May of 2022. April we hit the five percent interest rate. May hit the peak in, uh, average sales price. It was a month lag because of course the home sales. Uh, lag uh, because the April, the, the May sales that closed were basically based on March and April contracts. So we're seeing that. But it's interesting that while we have had a 5% price decline here in Texas across the board, it has not been, that's a, a, a very modest decline relative to what's happened around the country. The median price, the same pattern has emerged uh, May of 2022 was the peak median sales price. And by May and June and July of 2023, it was down about five and a half percent. We are seeing some of that come down a little bit. Again, it probably is not going to be a much more significant decline because again, we have still continued high demand, relatively low supply. So prices are not, they're real sticky in terms of falling when you have that kind of imbalance. Generally where you get big price movements is where you have oversupply and under demand. Then you would expect to see prices decline and decline more significantly. Listings, homes are, are being offered for sale. Kind of contrary to what you would think because a lot of the boomers and the Gen Xs who are homeowners, um, you would think would not be as anxious to want to sell their properties, particularly if they have low interest rates on the property and not have to go out and buy a new property uh, at a higher rate and at a higher price. And that's if they can find what they're looking for in the first place. But we are we are experiencing some uptick in that. However, the month's inventory, the, the average number of home sales per month relative to the number of listings is still not in what we would call the normal or the balanced market level. We're running at about four months uh, inventory. Uh, balanced market is somewhere between five to seven months. So it's still a tight market. It is still, relatively speaking, a seller's market because there aren't still uh, that many properties being offered for sale. Now, the... the uh, auctions and the multiple bids on the same property uh, being and being properties being sold within 24 hours of being listed. A lot of that has loosened up a little bit, but but still, still relatively speaking, uh, we are undersupplied by a considerable amount relative to the demand of people looking to buy a home. We're looking this year for home sales to be down uh, oh, probably about 11 or 12 percent. Uh, it, it, the higher interest rates, again, having that impact on sales. Prices are going to be more or less flat. And by flat, uh, anywhere between plus one or one and a half percent to minus one, one and a half percent. Somewhere in that range. And so I called it flat just to just to balance it out. It, it's really difficult to make that call of what prices are going to do. If they go down, it won't be by very much. It might be one, one and a half, two percent. They might even go up because of the shortage of inventory. And if the interest rates don't go up to eight and a half, if they if they hold off and, and bounce at eight and come back down again, 
then we might see some tick up in, in uh, home prices. Little tough to call at, at this point. What we're looking for though, is the continued slowdown for 23, probably some slowdown in 2024, especially the first quarter, maybe the first half before interest rates moderate, flatten out and maybe even decline some more. Uh, we're going to see uh, uh, a lot of information on that in, in the days to come. Again, prices probably going to be flat to slight increase. If you think that you're gonna wait and buy a house uh, six months or eight months or nine months from now at a lower price, probably not going to happen. Or if it, if it does, it won't be that much lower. Probably going to be about what you're looking at today uh, anyway. Uh, resales and, and limited uh, by, by boomers and Gen Xers really not being that anxious to sell their properties. Home building is still limited. New home construction, though, has done very, very well in Texas. New home sales, volume-wise, actually exceeded uh, uh, existing home sales uh, in terms of rate of increase and, and indexing of where they were before. The millennials are the ones who are feeling this the most. First-time buyers, which a lot of times translates to millennials, young people in their early 30s getting started in their careers want to be homeowners. And incidentally, if you haven't noticed, in the last two years, the rate of home ownership has increased significantly from about 64% of households to nearly 66, actually a little bit better than 66% of the households. Two thirds of the household in the, in the United States are now homeowners. And a lot of that had to do with when home, when interest rates were in the twos and threes, and a lot of people were able, first time buyers were able to enter the market and buy a home. We'll have to see how that happens. So the millennials, on the demand and the affordability, uh, the, dis the dispersion of incomes, uh, millennials that just starting out in their careers, young people uh, don't have the kind of income, don't have the kind of resources sometimes to participate in the housing market. And they're the ones who are finding it very, very uh, uh, unaffordable. So we'll have to see the pricing is still pushing. Uh, it's interesting on a spatial relationship the higher prices are forcing home builders to move further out and away from the urban center, looking for uh, less expensive land, lower development costs, and the ability to be able to co construct homes in that sweet price market for first time or second time buyers, move up buyers uh, in that price level. Very difficult to hit the first time buyer, but they can hit the first time move up. And then we'll have to see if a change in the work requirements where pe more people are working from home, not they're working remotely, not having to commute in to the central downtown market to go to the office, that's actually allowing and maybe even encouraging some of this movement. We'll have to see how it goes. 2024, like I say, is going to be a very interesting year. And we hope that you'll stay with us at the Real Estate Research Center and make available the data that we provide to you to see how it's going. Thank you. For the latest information on the economy and the housing market, be sure to visit the Real Estate Research Center website and to follow us on our various uh, outlets on social media. <music>